Welcome to Ascend, Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. Today's segment is on autism in France, and we are joined by our guest, uh, Ascend co-founder and co-chair, Greg Yates, and Ascend member, Anne Lore Davin. Welcome to the show. Thank you. We're glad to have both of you here. First, first question. Tell us about your trip to study the Ascend community and community in France. Well, let me begin by saying that Anne Lore is uh, my partner as well, and we had heard bad things about the state of autism in France, and so Anne Lore wanted to visit her family in France, and we decided to look into the question when we went there. So the first place we went was Paris, and. Why don't you read what it says, Anne Laura, since you're French? Can you read? Oh, you can't read that. It says, uh, Bienvenue sur le site du CREF, Centre de Ressources Autisme Ile de France. It says, it's the Autism Resource Center for uh, the center part of France. And there, uh, in a very nice little area of the city, down a pretty little alley, was a very nice little building where we met two people. Two women. Two women. Uh, Anne Francoise Boursol and Mallory Chaptal. And they work with uh, uh, children and young adults on the autism spectrum. We were, of course, expecting the worst based on what we had heard about France beforehand. And what we found was a very nice, uh, well kept interior for, uh, of their building, and two people who actually seemed to know quite a bit about autism, and uh, they did not seem to us as if they were living in the dark ages. Now, you have to understand how we found the people that we visited in France. How did we find them? Well, um, I looked it up on the internet, and um, I asked, um, I knew which locations we're going to go, so I asked around, and um, so these people answered. <laughs> That's how we found them. So the people we did end up seeing in France were people who responded to Anne Laura's inquiries beforehand. So that's a selected population. Um, anyway, uh, we uh, tell what did we ask? What kinds of things did? Oh, tell them about the government funding and all. That. Oh yeah, this one, the first one, La Cref, mm -hmm. um, was um, actually founded mostly, I think, by the French government, which was a good surprise, meaning there is uh, some kind of a government help, governmental help. The whole uh, center, resource center, basically, you know, was uh, founded by the government. So again, it, it didn't seem like the dark ages. These people seemed uh, educated about autism and aware of the issues, some of the issues of autism advocacy, um, and it was being funded by the government. So that was, a, we felt, was a, an encouraging sign. Uh, after that, uh, we, uh, and we met with good contacts and so on, uh, we went to Café Asperger, tell me about yeah, this. Café yeah. Asperger de Paris. Yes. Who which is? Tell me about it. Well, which is led by Hélène Tavo. Is that what you want yeah, me yeah, to yeah, say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Asper Asperger et France. So it's um, it's like a sun, kind of, except in French. And yeah. we felt it was a little bit further back in some ways. But uh, let's face it. Can I tell that we yeah, were sure. following Tony At Tony Atwood was right before us, so it was a difficult act to follow. <laughs> <you know? laughs> so it's actually not, it's like Ascend in that it had both parents and people on the spectrum there, but it did not have a big representation of professionals as uh, we have in Ascend. So, and uh, not that many people on the, the spectrum uh, the, either. The, the, the meeting itself, so this is held what, monthly, I believe, was in the, uh, above a cafe, so it's interesting how they ran it. Uh, you had to go to the cafe and uh, pay, you had to buy a drink and go upstairs. If you didn't buy a drink, then you couldn't go in. Uh, and once you've done that, and that's, but then they didn't in have to pay words, for the rent. In other words, it cost money to I go understand. there. Yes, yeah, so it cost money to go there. Always. <laughs> uh, and the people there, anyway, it was a good selection of people. Uh, what struck me was I met, I spoke to one person who had, was a young man who had come all the way from Nice, which is in the south of mm -hmm. France. Uh, at, to get to this meeting. Now, he probably had other reasons to be in Paris, but the strong suggestion was that there aren't a lot of meetings like this in France. If he had to go all the way from Nice to Paris to find a meeting, well, that was the kind of the way it sounded when uh, talking to him. But so, can I say that yes. Hélène Tavo, who led it, was pretty uh, well, obviously she knew her spiel about Asperger syndrome. You know, she had a 
good spiel. Mm -hmm. uh, it rem again, it reminded me of uh, Ascend 15 years ago. What was going on, there was a lot of education going on, just teaching people about autism. So it, it felt yes. like, like a time warp uh, to us, but very much on the right track. Um, so we had a good time there. We met interesting people, including a, a couple of parents who were actually interested in, tell me about, tell us about that. Oh yeah, that was kind of a funny little thing. Uh, we met some parents whose uh, son, about 20 years old, I, I forget his age exactly, 18 maybe, had just left without telling them where he was going. And so they were, of course, very, very concerned, you know, about their, who their child, who they felt was on, spe on the spectrum. And what happened, it turns out, he was in this area. Yeah, he, we got, did he that basically fighting. took the family <laughs> credit card and came to the, to, to the San Francisco Bay Area to study computers. They wanted us to spy on him, but we declined. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well done. Yeah. Anyway, uh, our next stop, we uh, traveled all the way over. So Paris is sort of in the upper right-hand corner, of more or less, of France. But we went up down over to the, uh, the left side of France, the west side of France. Well, that's now, my hometown. Which is to her hometown, which tells us uh, Les Sables d'Olonne. So we uh, went to Les Sables d'Olonne, indeed, to my uh, mom. <laughs> there we went to, uh, why don't you say, the Centre Jean Itard. Oh, yeah, but how did we get to the Centre Jean Itard in Les Sables d'Olonne? Is uh, because we had actually, in La Roche-sur-Yon, which is 30 kilometers from Les Sables d'Olonne, uh, there was an autism um, organization who... Uh, actually wanted us to be their main speakers during their once a year Assemblée Générale, which General I don't know. Assembly. General <laughs> Assembly, you know? And they actually even pushed the date over one week so we could speak mm -hmm. at, their, uh, in, at their place. But then, since it's 30 kilometers away from uh, Les Sables d'Olonne, they knew we did not have easy transportation. They said, why don't you go we have members in the Sable d'Olonne. Why don't you go there? And that's when it actually was very interesting. Now, this place is named after Jean Itard, who's the guy most famous for uh, The Wild Child and the film, uh, who uh, was a, an early psycho psychologist who studied uh, the life and behavior of a child found uh, wild in the woods of France. And Francois Truffaut made a film about it. Uh, and uh, it says on the um, poster for it, not a man, not an animal, the wild child. So we weren't sure what to expect. <laughs> uh, it turns Especially out that this, since it's this building, the, <laughs> the building was just down the street from where Anne Lord grew up. So that means I biked in front of this place like forever during my first 18 years. Okay? And, it and each time I was like, oh, what kind of place is this? You know, it looked so bad. <laughs> it looks grim. To me, it looked like the outside of a gas chamber at Auschwitz. I'm sorry, uh, Corinne. It, it doesn't look terrible from the street. But... Once we went inside, that's right. Totally it different. It was beautiful. Uh, <laughs> they, they had a, a wonderful little courtyard with grass and trees, the kinds of thing that people on the spectrum tend to like. Uh, the, into, uh, the interiors were uh, brightly painted and pretty with lots of materials. The children, it, so this was one of the day schools that they tend to, uh, um, and that's one aspect of what they did there, it, uh, where so children came here during the day. This was more for children. Uh, Can we tell center. about, there were two women who showed it, uh, showed yeah. us around. They were um, Corinne delon Saunier and Amélie Lebon. Yeah. And uh, Corinne uh, and I are still in touch, actually. She made a yeah. movie several years ago. Anyway, anyway they, were, uh, they were great. Again, uh, they seemed like enlightened souls, uh, aware of the issues of autism. And it, was, it wasn't uh, grim at all. It didn't seem to us as if they were, you know, hiding some dark machinations. I mean, Corinne is a psychiatrist in France, and my experience of psychiatrists in France is just, like, in shameful a little bit, you know? Yeah, but she, Corinne, yeah. not at all like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was a uh, nice surprise. So, yeah. again, uh, we were very pleasantly surprised. Uh, in addition to the art materials and things of that sort, we saw they had a room for sensory therapy, a hydro th uh, for people. They, uh, they said a lot of the kids love to play with water. Uh, anyway, it, uh, again, it, uh, it seemed like a fairly positive place and experience to us, not the darkness that we were expecting. Mm -hmm. uh, so after that, we moved stop. to our last stop, which was 30 was kilometers away. One. Yeah, La Roche-sur-Yon, that was uh, uh, l'Hôpital Mazurel. That was really the, the biggest yeah, one. Yeah, that was our know, big we, stop. We mm -hmm. had to. And it's a big campus, sort of like a uh, university campus, like you know Berkeley or a large hospital, many buildings. So we were in a, 
the mental wing, though. Very and, charming, actually. Yeah. I thought. Anyway, the uh, the organization we were we were visiting was called Autism Alliance 85. I've got that wrong. Do you have something? And uh, now just a minute. And uh, uh, which and Corinne, the woman we had just met, and Amelie were on uh, on the board of that organization. Um, so uh, the first thing that this was there is that's said, you thinking it was great. I think it's okay <laughs> from well, an American point of view. Before the before the actual talking, uh, they had some um, hors d'oeuvre, canapé, you know, like. Very French, Good according stuff. to French. <laughs> 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 I don't know. There were maybe 40 or 50 people there, and more came later. Uh, and uh, so, the, yeah, so it was very French with all this great food to begin with. Then we went into an art, a well-lit auditorium and uh, sat down at the front. It was sort of like a medical auditorium, you know, where a lecture will be given and the seats rise up from there. And... Uh, at our request, they dimmed the lights, so that was very nice. Yeah, because and, me and they the lights. were just <laughs> fascinated in us. Uh, again, it struck. Uh, these were mostly parents, some French. adults. French so parents. I was speaking in French yeah. and translating their questions, and then translating his answers when yeah. they came. Uh, they seemed very open and respectful, and again, it felt like 15 years ago. Uh, so I, I felt uh, that they were very much on track. Uh, they were very interested in, in the uh, interests and views of adults on the autism spectrum. I think they were relieved to see that people could function. Mm -hmm. uh, and there were uh, several, a couple of, uh, at least a, uh, two, or, two or more uh, adults on the autism spectrum. That not we, many, uh, though. Not many. But I they mean, were less there, than a handful. Mm -hmm. And they were very interested, extremely interested. I think it was actually very encouraging to them to see us. Yeah, they even uh, spoke about, yeah, they asked uh, their young member to talk to us. And so again, and some, our overall uh, sense, or my overall sense, was that things were, things were picking up in France. They did ask some, they, we were asked about packing this business of wrapping mm -hmm. kids. And, uh, Which I don't uh, know anything about. And <laughs> so they were curious to know about that. But again, it was clear that, they, that there was a, a discussion going on. Though it's that. true that, you know, I, I have met a lot of um, French people who told me that they shipped their kid to Belgium, yes. their autistic kid. Because of the lack of because resources. of the lack of so there's not much there, but there is some. It's picking up. It's looking better. It's heading in the right direction. They're joining the world, uh, and at the they then posted an announcement on their website about our meeting. And why don't you translate that? What they said about our meeting? Oh well, they say that they had a superb uh, meeting last night, and that uh, our Andor and Greg's uh, speaking was so moving, so precious for parents and professionals and the young autistic people presence. Really a great moment. This yeah. is pure translation. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, that's how it came across. It was good for them and good for us, and go France. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beyond avoiding the, the uh, quite horrific things mentioned in the film and in some other mm -hmm. instances, uh, can you recommend anything that you've learned uh, through Ascend over the past 15 years that might be particularly helpful for the uh, French community so that they wouldn't have to reinvent the wheel, as it were? Hmm. I, I don't want to you know, dictate or lecture <laughs> to the French people. They, they can figure a lot of this stuff out on their own and will. Um, I would say that the lessons we've learned in America is the importance of the voice of people on the autism spectrum. That Once they be again. incorporated and in, in, integrated into the whole process of decision making about autism at every level. Mm -hmm. I would say that would be the single most important feature to incorporate. Yeah, because I, I find that in both in the countries that I know, United States and France, in both countries, that's the main thing is that autistic people be allowed to speak. Yeah. That sounds very uh, yeah. positive. Yeah. And I think that's about it for yeah. uh, you. And I know we'll be seeing a lot more from both of you in uh, episodes to come. Thank you very much for your talk.